Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Charlotte, North Carolina for the 2021 Disc Golf Pro Tour Tour Championship. We are at the quarterfinal stage. Jeremy Colling, all you, LaBerry, Big Barry, bringing you all the action today. Oh, man, look Ooh. at this. Grip six, low profile. Drew Gibson is going to be throwing some lines today. He can always supply a bunch of fantastic shots. Great statistics as well. Chris Dickerson, 10th place position. Mm -hmm. Last. Yeah, and he had a, he won the GMC just a couple weeks ago. Joel Freeman, incredible year after taking 2020 off. Third place at Idlewild. Ezra Aderhold, that incredible finish, or at the, yeah, finish at the first event of the year, Las Vegas. Really a breakout season for him. Drew Gibson on this course last year dropped, a, I believe, a couple of 10 downs, or at least one of them. He plays Hornet's Nest well. He's going to be certainly someone to watch today. But Joel Freeman, backhand, forehand combo. Ezra Aderhold with a three on 17 last year. And obviously, Chris Dickerson won it two years in a row and came down to the final hole last year. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2021 Disc Golf Pro Tour Championships. This is the 3 p.m. tee time. Up first, from Gray, Tennessee, please welcome Mr. Chris Dickerson. Hi, my name is Chris Dickerson, and I'm from Johnson City, Tennessee. This weekend, we get the opportunity to play for $30,000. Overall, Hornet's Nest is one of the best courses that we play all year on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. It sets up really well with difficult par threes, but it's mainly just staying in the middle out here. As long as you do that, you'll more than likely take a par, but it's getting aggressive sometimes and, you know, trying to get that birdie that will set you apart from the rest. I would have to say my biggest strength is the mental side of disc golf, being able to keep yourself calm and focus through situations. At these bigger tournaments, it's hard to keep your composure whenever things aren't going your way, but uh, that's one of the most important things because once you let one thing get to you, um, that'll open up the door for so many more. I've been in the sport about 10 years, five to six years professionally. The first initial leap into playing the professional side was kind of a leap of faith. I quit my job, jumped into professional disc golf and I was really hoping uh, I'd be able to catch on quick. <laughs> I'm glad that I made that decision, but like most big decisions in life, it's kind of scary whenever you first do it. I would love to keep playing this game uh, as long as my body allows. There, there are people that are 40, even 50 years old that still compete in the open division. So as long as I'm able to compete, I would really love to do that. That's just what I want to do. I think all of us out here kind of shoot for winning the top prize, but for me, it's more about winning the title. I've won this event two years before. Last year, it came down to the last hole and I ended up losing it, so it would be great to get back on top. Chris Dickerson, 147 career wins since 2014. 2013 was his first year in the PDGA. 2014 was when he went pro. 147 wins. That is an insane number of average wins per year. Bad kick to the left on hole one, though. It's going to be a tough competitor on our scramble. Our second BMT time from Aberdeen, South Dakota. Please put your hands together for Mr. Ezra Adderhold. I wouldn't be surprised if Chris Dickerson has more tournament wins than Ezra has played PDJ events. Yeah, I, I think it's it's probably not even close. He's probably got him three times over. But, Ezra waited a long time. Oh, my goodness. Speaking of a long time, that took a long time to get turned over, and that's a beautiful tee shot right there for Ezra on hole one. Our third competitor on our 3 p.m. tee time, hailing from Loveland, Colorado. Please welcome Mr. Joel Freeman. If you guys missed the first round, uh, really the key to hole one is making that initial gap going as far as you can without hitting anything. If you hit early like Chris Dickerson did, kick to either side, par is going to be a big-time struggle. So that's what we're really looking for. 
That's early, it's okay, but it's the middle. Kicks to the middle. He'll be able to get up and down from about 250 feet. Rounding out our lead card of the 2021 Disc Golf Pro Tour Championships, brought to you by Guaranteed Rate. Please put your hands together for Mr. Drew Gibson from Carmichael, California. Drew is a obviously backhand dominant player. Doesn't love going with the forehand, but he has got so many angles, so much power, incredible touch. It's going to be a pleasure to watch him throw this course today. This needs the turn. Oh, yeah. Breaks down the middle. That is that is just fine. That's better than fine. That's excellent. Pass the basket. Wow. So Joel will be up first. So Chris went farther, but off to the left. Yeah, and farther sometimes is worse. It, that is absolutely right. Joel making good work there. That'll be a cleanup par in hole one. See how close Chris got to the basket. Lick roller is like the only play you have from this left side of the fairway. A lot of people who throw all the way down there to the green as that's well mm -hmm. short. That's going to be mm -hmm. circled too. Tough putt to start off for the par. Here it is. But a lot of people who go deep like Drew did to the right there, there's a lot of trees that obstruct your putt so i'm yeah. curious to see if he even has a look i've been over there several times and played with competitors who've been over there on up shots and drives yeah he's got some foliage in his reach back Let's see if that affects him yeah, a little low a good run right on line but you're right this this hole isn't difficult just because the trees in the middle it is surrounded by trees all the way around the basket at all angles Really, the play is like this. Is it, If you land oh, short yeah. right around circle's mm -hmm. edge, then it opens up all kinds of avenues for that punting stroke. So good start for Ezra. And this is the last group of the day. These guys do have priority as far as the, any tie breaks that come down to the wire in the last group. If these guys are tied with anybody that's already finished, they would get the nod and move on to the next round. By that, I mean this is a... An event where there are 12 players on the course. 12. And the top four scores move on to the semifinals on Saturday. Drew Gibson with his par. Joel with his. Ezra with a big birdie. And speaking of courses or tournaments played versus tournaments won, Chris Dickerson has 78 more wins than Ezra has tournaments played. There you go. Insane. Hole two, island, par three, 340 feet. That out of bounds line is about a meter off that wall that you see. It is not that uncommon for discs to hit trees and slide back downhill OB. This needs to hit a tree going left because if this, this could easily slide OB and does, that means Ezra will advance to the FPO drop zone. And Joel will do the same. A brutal change on this hole. Went from a wide open tee shot to now we have to hit this initial gap, which is only about 10 feet wide. Really a great second hole because if you can get on the island, secure the birdie, be right around one under to even par starting your round. Oof, this looks good. Fantastic. I mean, it's just a booster Oof. because it's, it's really a momentum hole. It, it is so difficult to get the disc to stop close with that pine straw you're just going to see discs slide and slide and slide and that time drew put the brakes on perfectly drew coming off a great performance at the usdgc fourth place finish his best finish at a major championship he's feeling good yeah i mean with he comes in at with the great players as mm -hmm. an underdog in the tournament but with momentum on his side that fourth place finish was with 21 out of bounds strokes. It was mentioned by Bradley Williams that he was either throwing the best shots ever thrown in the course or the worst shots. <laughs> and from this drop zone earlier today, Holly Finley struck gold with a hole in one. These players obviously are just trying to get their fours at this point and that settles, but that's gonna be some work for Joel Freeman. Yeah, him and both Ezra are gonna have to earn their bogeys from distance oh and that falls out on the right side for chris 
So unable to erase the bogey from hole one. That's a good bogey hit for Joel. When Joel's putt has been on fire, he really generates a lot of confidence and it stems into some incredible shot making, forehand, backhand, and a ton of power. Ezra also, nice bogey save. Yeah, good touch on that putt. A little left side, but having the right speed made that basket extra big. And Drew's just left with a tap in here for birdie. It really is hard to imagine a tee shot coming to rest on this mulch here by the basket, but Drew nearly did that. I'm Paul Uliberry with today's Bushnell Hole Breakdown. You can find the Edge Disc Golf Range Finder at the link in the description. The par fours here at Hornet's Nest are designed to challenge your whole game. This hole makes you bend the disc from right to left and then left to right into the green. Nice job, course designer. Let's see how it plays out. <laughs> Stan McDaniel appreciates your, yes. <laughs> your nice words. Stan, Hall of Fame disc golfer, three-time Masters world champion, and one of the greatest disc golf course designers of all time. And Drew, even though oh this is goodness. leaking, I mean, wow. that, that was a beautiful shot shape. He hit the like initial gap. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. So oh. even though he catches the right tree, he can gain confidence from that beautiful release. So, so all the people out there that don't like elevated baskets, you could probably blame Stan McDaniel for designing the first ever elevated basket. Chris Dickerson just threw one of the best drives you'll ever see in this hole. That bridge is an indication of absolute perfection. Ezra forcing the turnover. Wow, this is looking really nice. Really opened up that fairway with that angle off the tee. And he's going to bounce off the fence. Oh, my God, he's got a cannon. He gets the nod from Nate Perkins over there. <laughs> he almost took off Nate Perkins' nodder. It's way too turned. If he stays on the right side, that's fine. He does not, or left side, pardon me, that's not. It kicks to yeah. the right side, and that's really bad. Legend has it that Drew Gibson said, I saw Eulabari try this in a practice one, round one time, going through the corner, making up shots. And did it work out? It did. Yeah, he's going to have uh, no. 150, 150 <laughs> feet in the green. That is so fortunate. A kick to the right early and Drew's chances of moving on are almost gone. I, I mean, think I think that Joel's thinking of the same idea here. This this rough on the right side can end your day, and it's hole three. I mean, this is not a hole you want to play with. If you're off the fairway, get back to the fairway as soon as possible. This looks like a good angle coming in with some good speed. Yes, picture Ezra. perfect. Sidearm sidearm combo, loving it. Dickerson going with the turnover putter to land soft. Oh, That's a little left side, it. and there's actually going to be, again, just like hole one, if you get to a certain part of this green, mm. the putt becomes very difficult no matter how far you are. Curious to see where he ended up. Got to go through the inside route there. Yeah. Yes, nice touch. Not Drew's favorite shot. He really – I've always said he has a good forehand, but he doesn't believe he has a good forehand, or at least he's trying to – He's fishing for compliments, but he doesn't like to go to it if he doesn't have to. So Joel's going to have that putt, I believe, for the par. Let's see if Chris can hyzer this one in very tight to the tree. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Snuck that into the bucket. What a putt. Yeah, that's a backyard playing disc. Yeah, Putt with your friends right there. Off the back cage, no chains until it ricocheted back in. That's a letter and horse all day. Oh, awesome putt. Joel, nice par save. Good scramble. Both Drew and Joel 
coming out of the woods in the early right side, a whole three unscathed. That is, that is a rare sight. Two birdies, two pars, not awesome. too bad. Yeah, no, for hole three, not bad at all. That putt from Chris was so awesome. On to hole four, par four, 730 feet, slightly low ceiling, but it's not gonna be low enough to obstruct these guys with their drivers. They're gonna throw it flat, over stable, and try to get it to skip as close to the softball fence as they can, which opens up the angle for the forehand or backhand turnover as much as possible. There is OB if you drive it too long and straight. If this gets around those initial cedars, it's going to be fine. It actually came up short of those cedars, but it, if it got past them, he should be okay. It's going to be a pretty, pretty tough shot from there. And once you get up against that fence, oh. um, then that's just a straight yank job there from Ezra. Good fortunate kick into the middle. He'll be able to play for par. But once you get over to that fence, then it's going to require the sidearm flex so that yep. your arm can be farther away from the fence line and you're able to work an angle into e the height that gonna hit is required. Yep. And yeah, Drew, and that's going to be short. That's going to be a decision time for Drew. Is, is he going to play aggressive or just play to the corner? Avoid going OB, hopefully. I heard that he was doing this. You know, I I tried this in practice one time, and it worked out great, and I just still decided to throw a backhand horrible. Joel is going to be close enough to the Cedars that he's going to have a decision. Does he play over the out-of-bounds going straight to the basket, or does he play it safe as well? Because he's not going to have the angle to go on the left side of these Cedars. Well, that's very ambitious from that lie right there from Ezra to... Take that wide and try to get all the way to the green, I think is what he was trying to do. Mm -hmm. Doesn't quite get it to flat. Fortunate break off the tree to stay in bounds. So let's see if he does. Yeah, see, so yeah, he has he's to, going for it. He has to go with that Anheuser release to get it over the fence. I like it. As long as it doesn't roll. Don't roll. It's always going to roll a little bit, but yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's right where you were yesterday when you made your jump putt for three. Yep. You'll take that result all day. It looks like Drew is lining up the aggressive route. Why not? That's very high. If this stalls out, this could be wonderful. That's it. That kept turning, and that is going to be out of bounds. And so, eh. Drew, yeah, Drew's not going to want to run that putt. That's going to be most likely a bogey. That's the only thing. You just have to miss that pole. That's. That is why that shot is so risky. The gap is pretty big, but there's one thing right in the way. And that that is going to really deflate Joel. That's going to be a tough one to bounce back from. I mean, if he makes that, that's just a bogey. That's not too bad. I agree with you. I, it just, I, I think what it does to you mentally as far as not executing the shot, you knew that that pole was in the way and you hit it. It, it can have an effect long-term on a player's side. Sure, yeah. Of course, it's just the bogey. When you look at the number itself, it could be could, could be, be a lot worse. Catastrophic from there. You do it again. Yes. Then all of a sudden, you're staring seven right in the face. Here's Drew. Is he going to get fancy with it? He kind of did. My goodness, that is a uh, it's a big risk to take from that distance with the slope behind the basket. This is a green light go opportunity for Chris, and he has made back to back great putts. Throwing on the shades to block out the sun, and look at that. All of a sudden, he becomes a cool guy and makes a big putt. Cool guys don't watch long putts. But he did, and I think he's still cool, so I don't know where I stand on that right now. He could have had his eyes closed. Great putt from Ezra. Wow. He really sends it in there, doesn't he? Yeah. He's got a nice, aggressive putt. Joel saving the single bogey. Now he's, he's two over, yeah, though. Yeah, two overs off pace. Yeah, it, it the start one and two are so difficult that you forget how three and four can, they can get you. I mean, four was only birdied by three players out of the 12-player field, 
it averaged four for the day. So not necessarily an easy hole to bounce back after one and two. Hole five playing a little bit easier. Par three, brand new hole, 405 feet. There's essentially two main options. Forehand flexes you back into the hill, but you can also stand the chance of rolling back down. And there is OB left the whole way. There's also OB right the whole way. This looks a little bit low. He's going to need ground play to help him out. That circle too. Tough putt to run, especially with that slope. Did that even make it into circle two? I think I think he should have some, yeah. some sort of putt. So what is Ezra going for? He's going for the high turnover as a very low ceiling through that gap. And that needs to put the brakes on. It will. So that'll be safe. What does Drew have here? Same disc he threw on hole one. Okay. So this is a fairway driver? Yeah, I think this is a T-bird. Oh my goodness, that is so beautiful. That is, this is not, uh, that is not realistically, that is unrealistically good. To control that angle with Anheuser coming into that hillside, it has to land flat. If it lands the Anheuser, it's rolling OB every time. Man, to get that shape and get it to land flat is so impressive. Joel going for the straight sidearm gap and executing the shot shape but not the not enough distance i think that's fine didn't he make it into the circle um ezra didn't no <laughs> twice oh that's that's a that's one of those want to get away moments that's not not what ezra was looking for can he make it three in a row Oh, he certainly good. gave it the effort. It was a good sit. Flop right on a, the back instead of getting up on the edge there. That was fortunate. Yeah, I guess Joel did make it into the circle. Can Ezra save the part? Sit. Sit. Joel needs this. In the worst way. Yeah. Good confidence there. Good height. Good delivery. Great birdie. And a beautiful park job there from Drew with the backhand line. A rarely taken route to achieve the birdie on hole five. And you weren't kidding when you said good sit. That hillside is so angled behind the basket that if you give it a run, you have to be willing to accept the consequence of rolling back down the hill. OB so close to the basket. Very dangerous putt to run. Hole six is a par three, 480 feet. Very low ceiling. Quite a bit of room this year to swing it out to the right and hyzer back in. I got to give a hats off to the parks department. There was a street sign that was in the way of the pure flex line that they removed before the tournament. Been asking them to do it for years and they finally took care of it. And I'm look at this bullet. I feel heard. I feel seen. That is, is that a fairway driver or is that a driver? That's a driver. You still in destroyer there. Yes. Yes. Beautiful shot. Now watch this. Joel has a lot of power. Yeah. And he's going to get oh my goodness. up there. Didn't even hit his line. No, it's it's crazy because I, I don't think of him as a power player, but he throws it just as far as anybody that I know. He actually is really good at the line that we all give Nico credit for, that force flex shot. He is really good at leaning in and committing to that angle. Chris playing it on the safer side, not quite getting it to turn. You really want to see it turn in the first 10% of the flight, and then you want to see it flatten out after that just to get that full distance. Or if you're Ezra, you can just go Spike Heiser all the way and maybe just go past the basket. Oh, that grass just gobbled it up. But yeah, that is past the basket. I think that's or perfectly one inch in, into the circle. 
Wow. That was great. All one angle. Incredible. See if Joel can find two birdies in a row to get him back to even. I didn't quite commit that time. So it looks like Drew's in the circle, maybe. Oh, Drew's well in the circle. This is in the circle. This is playing at about wow, yes, 30 feet. Beautiful putt down the hill. Ezra. Back to one under par. Oh, Drew coming up short. Yeah, one inch low. I, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. With Drew's miss putt in the circle, <laughs> this hole averaged 2.5. Six players birdied it and six players parted. it. With Chris making that putt, of course. But that would have been insane. If <laughs> This is an incredibly hard hole to get to reach this. But we are also talking about the top players on tour. But yes. it's still, it, it, that is a remarkable score to, to achieve even with the best players, in my opinion. Yeah, hole seven, par four, 641 feet. You're going to need to throw anything that bends from left to right. Stay away from the road on the left. Stay away from the woods on the right. Anything even in the grouping of trees will give you some sort of shot. Hopefully that's a sidearm into the green, skipping from left to right. This needs to turn, and I don't think it's going to turn enough. It could get lucky. It could get lucky. Oh my goodness. He hangs on by the skin of his teeth. My goodness, Ezra, that was cutting it close. Roll, roller? Roller. This is too tight. Is it? Oh my goodness. Okay. That's going to come back and bounce. That is a Oh, that is an absolute bomb. That is an absolute cannon. I think that's the farthest drive I've ever seen on the hole. By 100 feet. The only one that I can think of that would compete would have been Robbie Bratton, who threw a roller as your partner at the U.S. Doubles some years back, who threw a surge roller down the road, just like that. Joel is in trouble. That is... Not putting yourself in the position to get the birdie. He's going to be scrambling to save the par. This needs to drift. It's drifting. That little bank on the side of the hill really keeps those discs away from the road. As long as they're not skipping with a lot of angle, that was a nice shot from Chris. Especially with a mid-range. I mean, that's not going to do anything, but stay exactly where he wants it. He's going roller. He could get there. This Not on that angle, though. Yeah. That was a, let's say, par angle. That was a, could have thrown a sidearm easily to get that far, if not farther. But he was trying to play aggressive, just didn't allow his body to, to really trust it over the road that he, the way he needed. He needs to hurry. Okay, yeah, yeah that's, that's fine. That's fine. Joel... We've seen this shot before. It needs to be all hyzer. Skipping in now. Yes, yeah. that's in the circle. Okay. That's Very it. good. He's doing everything that he needs to do to scramble. And this is zone pulled to the right that could catch those trees just like yeah. the other one does. And now he's going to have that obstructed putt to the to the left there. But he's been putting really well so far, so he needs to continue that right now. He is at one under par. And that was pulled as well. Sometimes the closer you get, the smaller the gap gets. And in his case... Who does... even practices from that close? Yeah, nobody. Ezra Aderhold, his putter is keeping him in this. A birdie on seven that brings him to two under par.
Drew is not happy right now. Drives on six and seven were incredible. Yeah, and the circle for birdie on both missing the opportunity. Mm. That's not a recipe for competing at this level right now. You have to make the inside the circle putts if you want to keep going in this tournament. With that being said, he's throwing incredible shots. So if he keeps giving himself those opportunities, he's going to score. Big putt for Joel. Okay, he saves the par, remains at one up. He's going to need to start turning on that birdie streak, though. This is not an opportunity when you can fall asleep and have a bad round, obviously. This is this is a match play event, essentially. You have to perform, and you have to do it early. You have to give yourself a little bit of cushion on the back nine because that's where Hornet's Nest really shows its teeth. And it really starts about now. This is when we really start to enter the woods and things become quite difficult after you get past hole eight. Par four, 534 feet. 230 feet is about the distance you want to go off the tee. If you want to hyzer into the gap and make your approach shorter, you can do so. But really, all you need to do is throw it straight 230 feet. Let's not forget about the middle tree because and it Ezra is didn't. a bruiser. That kicked him so far to the right that he could potentially have like a 350 foot straight line to the pin. Yes. Chris Middletree. That is not Chris's new nickname that he wants. Drew going inside Middletree. Does it have enough distance? Yes. It does that's perfect that needs to slow down slow down okay so he's gonna have to go through the back door which is accessible but it's not preferable you you wanna you wanna be where Drew is. It's a big advantage. Wow. Putting. Wow. That's still circle two. He's gonna have that big tree in front of him, but putting, that was great from there. That's what he wants to do right now. Putting is the place where he's been the safest so far. Oh boy. Don't. Yeah, we, we saw, wasn't it Chris that punched the tree earlier? Oh, he's City? got hands. <laughs> Forrest knows he's got some hands on him. Joel going hyzer. Skipping to the right. Yeah, open look there from about 30. Take that every time. Chris, a little bit of work here to save the par. Going to go with a high flex forehand. And that is trouble. Didn't see that one, I'm guessing. Yeah, he was looking around the corner to see which one was the bully. True going putter, putter. And he needs to get up and down. That's perfect. He's going to get his birdie here. But after throwing the disc so well on six and seven, if he had thrown another great drive on eight and didn't execute the birdie, that could have been really bad for his psyche going into the back nine. Bogey for Chris. Okay, Chris is off to a slow start. Let's mm -hmm. let's be honest. I mean, these guys are all not uh, not doing it. Yeah, you, I think you to to shoot the round that you're looking for. I think somewhere between four to six is the range, and that's going to be a three putt bogey for Ezra. Unfortunately, well, you really want to accumulate a lot more birdies. I feel like on this oh. nine as Joel pulls it off to the ride a little bit. You want to accumulate all your, not all your birdies, but a lot of the birdies on the front nine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think you want to be four to five under on the front. Okay, yeah. The National Amateur Disc Golf Tour is Disc Golf's only nationwide tour dedicated to amateurs, aspiring amateurs, and future professionals. With events in nearly every state, including Hawaii and Alaska, the NADGT allows amateurs from all over to compete against each other. Whether you're thinking about trying to play some tournaments, or wanting to take that final step to professionalism, the National Amateur Disc Golf Tour is the best place to look for the most fun and competition in disc golf. For more information about the tour or the season schedule, go to NADGT.com. 
Drew with the only birdie on the card. On a hole that was playing relatively easy for the field. Hole nine, the final one on the front. And it's a tough one, Paul. Par three, 430 feet. What are these guys gonna try to do here? Yeah, you wanna hit that initial gap at all costs. Whatever your best straightest disc is, do that. And then once you get down to the green, a lot of the best shots honestly end up drifting left and drifting right. Something dead straight for that long is nothing short of a miracle. Drew just getting hyzer through the gap and just, like you said, allowing it to just hyzer off to the left. And that should be an easy pitch up for par. Well, nobody's going to be trying to throw flat through this gap. They're going to be throwing their most understable disc. Oh, and the reason you want to Joel. do that is, and that he hits the oh, gap what? at the oh greatest kick gosh. of all time again. That's just what happens on this hole. What Sometimes power. avocados are crunchy. I will one day figure that out. This is a nice looking shot from Chris. Yeah, that's pin high. But back to my point, the reason that they're throwing very understable discs on this hole is because on your follow through, you can then go up. And by going up, you take out that right side. Mm -hmm. If you follow through flat through that whole shot, pulling it to the right becomes way easier. Yep. That's why we like throwing hyzer flips through there. Flip up flat is flat. And, and when that happens, that's when your disc is going to be drifting to the left where Drew was. That's a half inch again. He is on it. Wow. This is a bonus get. It really is. I believe the old Frisbee's whammos used to say flip, flat, fly straight. And we take that concept, even though we don't use those same words, and incorporate those into our straight tunnel shots. Oh, there it is. Good putt. Yeah. Okay. So that's a nice little salvation birdie for Dickerson. Absolutely. There ain't no give up in that, guys. No game, that's for sure. That'll bring him back to two under on the front nine. That's no case score. You, any point yes. in the back nine, yes. you can certainly put together three or four birdies. If you put three to, three birdies in a row in the back nine, you can pretty much assure yourself a, a spot in the finals if you just play pars on the other holes. And Joel gets back to even. So they're all it's all doable. You can shoot a six to five under on the back nine. That's very possible. It is, sure. I believe, the harder nine yes, I to agree score. Mm -hmm. It's I don't think it's a harder nine as far as out of bounds or anything like that. Correct. But in order to get in the positions, the positioning is so exact. Right. The landing zones are so specific. And looking in, we have Gannon Burr making his way in from round one. Nathan Queen, Matt Orm, and Chris Clemens, three of the four guys who made their way in from round one are leading the way once again during the quarterfinals. These guys have a little bit of experience with one round under their belt. Maybe that helps them out in some ways. There could be an advantage, obviously, by playing the course and understanding the flow of play and whatnot. So we'll see how that plays out on the back nine. We have nine more holes to go during the quarterfinal round here at the 2021 Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship. Come back for more Disc Golf.